Welcome to another 6.5 Media Virtual Podcast. I'm Will Townsend. I manage the networking and security practices for more insights and strategy. And joining me today is Sean Lawrence. He's the vice president and head of the IOWN development office with NTT. Sean, how's it going? Yeah, it's um, do, doing quite well. I'm um, usually based in Tokyo, but I'm um, here in Texas uh, for a NTT data event to run innovation. And uh, yeah, it's been an interesting couple of days. I bet it has been. And I enjoyed meeting you in Tokyo. I was at the R&D forum. I've been there the last two years. And um, I want to talk about I. And, and normally, I don't start off with uh, with a hot take question, but I think it's appropriate here. What's the most exciting thing to you about uh, I.O.? Right. So I think Ion has got a, a couple big kind of um, benefits or exciting points, and it's kind of unusual how they all come together. So with Ion, we think we can really improve the performance of ICT or IT infrastructure at the same time as improving sustainability. And even adding in, like, you know, what's surprising to me, on, on top of those two, we can actually make things a lot more flexible. So it brings a lot more flexibility to how we can design and implement IT uh, infrastructures. So those three together, I guess, sustainability, performance, and flexibility all coming together. Well, it's an ambitious goal, certainly. Uh, it's an all photonics optical network. And I know that it's going to roll out in different stages, but before we get to that point, can you basically summarize in a little bit further detail, like what, what's involved in all of this? Right. So ION is ION is a a I guess it's kind of like a paradigm shift in not just networking and in all data transmission um, and not just on the network but also inside computers. We we basically want to you know the transmission capabilities of photonics is superior to transmission capabilities of electronics. Mm -hmm. And you know we've built a lot of um, IT equipment, servers, networking gear, etc. based on electronics, but uh, what we essentially want to do with ION is switch pretty much comprehensively um, data transmission from electronic data transmission to optical or photonic data transmission. And that goes all the way, you know, the WAN, you know, we've been doing that for a while, um, but, you know, all the way down into data centers, um, into the servers themselves, the data transmission between the circuit boards inside the computer, the data transmission between the silicon packages on a circuit board, Mm -hmm. and even the data transmission between the silicon die inside a package. So we're talking kind of like from the real fundamentals inside the computer all the way through the WAN, we want all the data transmission to be done in photonics instead of electronics. And that'll bring, you know, as I mentioned uh, before, higher performance, much lower um, electricity consumption, lower heat, lower cooling requirements, um, and also the uh, the properties of photonics we can transmit data over longer distances than electronics. Um, mm -hmm. And that brings a lot of flexibility ultimately into how we can design computers, data centers, et cetera. So taking that photonics technology that exists for, for optical transport, bringing that down to the device and server level to your point, and it's, it's quite ambitious. I know this is a multi-staged rollout um, I believe it's you're, you're you started with 1.0. You're moving to 4.0. I think this year you're going to focus on 2.0, which is sort of the, the the device and board to board you know communications that you're talking about. So maybe you could step through each of these iterations and talk a little bit about the applications and the use cases that can benefit from each. Right. So we're starting with kind of refining the WAN side of things, refining the long distance. So that's the um, what we call the all photonics network, ION 1.0. Okay. Um, and really it's around architecting long distance networks um, so that you maintain a single wavelength end to end across the whole network. Um, and you never never convert to electronics between those the endpoints. Um, and that gives you really the fastest possible um, latency, very high throughput, um, essentially zero jitter, uh, zero packet loss. So it's a really, you know, it's a super high quality network if you can architect things so that you maintain that wavelength um, from end to end customer site to customer mm -hmm. site. So that's that's 1.0. Um, and that technology, you know, we've launched it as, a, it's already available. We've launched it as a carrier service in Japan and uh, we're working on um, a couple ideas to bring that to market outside Japan now. 
So 1.0 is not future future. It's kind of ready and in some places already available and uh, you were working on more locations. Um, 2.0 is, as you mentioned, board to board, connecting the circuit boards, um, you know, the circuit boards inside of a computer, connecting them with optical data transmission instead of electronic data transmission. Um, and that one is, you know, different stages are different levels of R&D, you know, 1.0 is essentially ready. Um, 2.0, um, the board to board is, I would say is development stage. Um, and coming up at the Osaka Expo, um, starting in a couple of months, we're going to have the first um, prototype of that ION 2.0 board to board um, connections. And yeah, we hope uh, to be able to commercialize that in the next year or two. Um, 3.0, getting even smaller, you know, it's really kind of a, the R&D focus is miniaturizing, miniaturizing, miniaturizing these optical communications components so that we can, you know, make it smaller and smaller, deeper, deeper inside the computing architecture. So 3.0 is when we, you know, start connecting the silicon packages. Colloquially, we call them chips, but it's actually technically a package, what's soldered onto the circuit boards. So connect those with optical data transmission. Um, that's that's still a few years out. Um, and really in the research phase is inside one silicon package, you have multiple silicon die, have them communicate um, via optics instead of instead of electronics. Um, and so that's that's kind of the full journey. And you know, the later stages are definitely research. Um, the earlier stages are pretty much ready for ready for showtime. You know, and whatever from a semiconductor perspective, you can integrate things, you can do 3D packaging, it just improves performance, right? It minimizes the board layout and you can just basically have more flexibility with from a design perspective. And yeah. what I find really exciting is I've gotten to know the NTT team and have really kind of dove very deeply into ION and what you're doing here is the opportunity for it to support modern AI workloads. I mean. Yeah. Th these are power hungry, very compute intensive workloads. And I'd love it if you could spend a little bit of time and, and talk about how you see ION facilitating the next generation of agentic and, and generative AI applications. Right. So we've been working with some partners. We have this big ecosystem. You know, when we talk about shifting, you know, IT infrastructure um, from chip design up through server design, you know, how, how you arrange your circuit boards, um, how you build your data centers. It's not something any one company is going to be able to affect across the whole um, IT landscape. So we, we've taken this kind of open standards based approach with the ION Global Forum. And we've got 155 members now, um, a lot of the leading companies in the world from hyperscalers to server manufacturers, networking equipment makers, um, et cetera. So we've got this whole ecosystem that we're working together with to make this shift. And inside that ION Global Forum, um, there are a number of different POCs um, that people are doing, um, different members have done and we've done, et cetera, around AI. Um, so one of our businesses, Docomo, Docomo Business, um, did some AI experiments. And uh, so, for example, if we have, if, you, if many companies don't have all of the GPUs that they need for, um, in one location. Mm -hmm. So they have to rent some, et cetera. So we did an experiment connecting with the ION 1.0 APN, where we got two data centers 40 kilometers apart, connect with the APN uh, network. And you got some GPUs in one data center, some GPUs in the other data center. And you make those a logical cluster and do your training on that. And the difference in performance between doing it with all your GPUs in one data center or distributed across these two was less than 1% time difference for your training time. Um, wow. So it can support, you know, if the, with the, the right networking, um, you know, it really can support a kind of disaggregation or virtual data centers. Um, so we think that's one important point. Um, the overall, you know, a big problem with the, the AI data centers is the power consumption. So, yeah. you know, everybody's struggling to find, to build new data centers, you got to find the power first. And a lot of locations um, have kind of put moratoriums on new new data centers or, you know, won't give the licenses because they don't have the power grid supply for it, et cetera. So this ability to kind of disperse data centers, I think is really important. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a, a few different uh, few different initiatives. We also did an experiment where we had, actually that same, same 40 kilometer apart data center, 
we did an experiment where we have GPUs in one data center and the data, the training data in a different data center. So normally you would copy all your training data over to your, to where the GPUs are. But yeah. that means first you have to have the storage or buy the storage in that other data center. Um, it also can be sovereignty or data privacy issues, et cetera. So we did the training uh, across the two data centers where we had data in one, GPUs in the other. Um, and it was only a 10% um, kind of tax on the training time to train with the data actually, you know, without copying the data over. So those are a couple areas where, you know, we think it can help uh, help with AI. But, you know, the power power consumption, uh, reducing power con um, consumption, reducing the heat generation, re reducing the cooling requirements, et cetera, also I think will be, uh, you know, very important going forward um, to supporting these uh, kind of ever-growing requirements um, from data centers overall, but particularly for these AI data centers. You know, sustainability is a huge issue, right? I mean, you know, what the European Union is, is struggling with right now, you know, it's, you know, I don't want to call it an energy crisis, but there are concerns, right, um, about the power consumption of uh, these GPU clusters and that sort of thing. And I know NTT has been very focused on sustainability with respect to your research as well. And, you know, I'm just wondering as we, as we wind up our conversation, from your perspective, how do you feel that ION is going to ensure that optimal balance of performance and energy? Because oftentimes there's a sacrifice for one right. versus the other, right? So would love to hear your thoughts on that point. Well, coming back to full circle, I mean, the fantastic thing about using photonics for data transmission is it's higher performance and more sustainable yeah. and gives you more flexibility how you can design things. So it's a, you know it's a it's a win 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 on all all three fronts there. Um, and we think you know for example the flexibility, we think we can move instead of having all the different necessary component like resources inside a computer, like your your motherboard, your NIC card, your memory, all physically inside one box connected with your electronic bus. If you move to optics, you don't actually have to have all those resources so close together because optics can transmit things longer distances without loss. Um, so we can move from having each server having all of the resources it needs to shared clusters of resources, which are put together kind of on the fly by software composed into servers. So when you do that, you get to the shared, shared pool of resources, you can manage it much more efficiently in terms of utilization, et cetera. So there are many different facets how we can help on the sustainability and the power side. It's not just from the lower transmission um, power requirements of the optics. It's also that flexibility for how you can design your architectures, design your infrastructures much more effectively and efficiently. Yeah, you know, it's it's a very compelling architecture. And you mentioned the ION Global Forum, over 150 members, like you mentioned, hyperscalers, Dell Technologies, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, um, mobile network operators. And, you know, that's the right approach because what you're doing, again, is very ambitious. It's very grounds up. And you have to have buy in from all of these players to be successful. So I think it really speaks to NTT's presence in the market that you're able to coalesce and bring all of these different technology partners together to uh, develop this all photonics optical architecture that um, I believe has great promise with respect to not only future AI workloads, but just computing in general. So Sean, it's been a great conversation. Um, I've learned a lot today and I uh, just wanna thank you for your time. Will, thank you so much. It's, it's really been a pleasure. And I and I will say from, from NTT, you gave us credit for, for us pulling it all together. I'd say the idea, it's the right idea, it's the right thing to do. And I think that's what's attracting all those all those companies to the ION Global Forum. So sure. moving from electronics to photonics, it's the right thing to do for the future of uh, IT performance um, and the planet. So I uh, really hope uh, that uh, we can we can make that shift with this big ecosystem that we've put together and uh, really appreciate your uh, having me on to help get the message out. You're welcome. And with that, I want to thank our viewers for tuning in to this 6.5 Media virtual podcast with NTT. Stay tuned for more information coming soon.